Hi fellow camera geeks, Harv here and welcome back. The curves function that comes with Final Cut Pro is pretty cool and something I almost always use. And why? Well, for me, it's about getting better gradation of the highlight and shadow areas in your footage. So let me show you why you should be using curves instead of simply adding contrast to your footage. If you like that track, you can get it, own it, and use it on your footage. It's part of my royalty free music packs, and they're linked below. Check them out. Now, let's dive in. In my last video, which was my five tips to using S Log more effectively, which if you haven't seen, you should definitely check out, and it's linked below, I showed you a couple of examples demonstrating the difference between using contrast and curves. And it, although it looked subtle to begin with, I think once you really kind of dig in and take a closer look, it can be quite a surprising difference when it comes to textures and skin tones. What I didn't show you, however, was exactly how I manipulate these curves to get this effect. So I'm going to start with this example and then I'll move on to a couple of other ones, you know, using uh, different profiles like Cine 4 and maybe a different scene like a landscape. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a lookup table dialed back to about 50% which is the S-Log2 to Rec709 lookup table. You could use any of them, but I'm gonna use this one for just a more natural look. Then I just made a couple of minor tweaks to the color wheels just to stretch the footage out a little bit. And then we start tackling our curves and the temptation for a lot of people will be to add a point in the, you know, in between the highlights and shadows and just drag the highlights up and bring the shadows down a tiny bit. And you can do that and it can work quite well. However, it's the subtle, points in between the nuance that we really want to manipulate to bring out the most in our footage. So once I have all my control points in place, I'll usually start by manipulating the shadow areas. And the thing is with this is, you know, shadows aren't just shadows. There are varying degrees. We've got all the way from the very sort of blackest of blacks all the way up to our midtones. So really just spend some time dialing in the exact amount of each that you want. So in this example, I then took a look at the very top end of our highlights and you can see the difference it makes to the LED bokeh balls in the background is really significant. So I actually found that by boosting that area of the highlights, it made those bokeh balls pop whilst actually not affecting our skin tones. Then when I move down to the upper mid-range area, this is when you have to be very, very careful. And obviously with this footage, I'm using 8-bit footage and it really shows if you push it too much, it's very obvious that it's only 8-bit. So subtlety is the key. I think if you were using, say, raw, obviously raw, or something like 12-bit, 10-bit footage, you'd probably have a little bit more room to play with. Just be subtle with it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going through each band and I'm making sure that nothing is clipping, nothing looks unnatural, but I'm trying to bring out the most amount of detail possible. So you can see the more that I play with this, the more it's starting to look like an S-curve, which is the classic curve shape, albeit a very unique looking one. So I suppose the point is just to really take some time with it, give it some love and really just massage the curve until you've brought out the most in your footage. So there we have it. At first it looks subtle, but really not so subtle once you take a closer look. Next we're looking at a low key scene and this is from my how to light a low key scene video, which I will link below if you're interested. Again, this was shot in Sony S-Log2, so I need to make some adjustments and to bring the exposure down. I've desaturated the highlights just a little bit and then we can move straight onto our curves. And as before, we're gonna add lots of control points all along our curve. In a scene like this, our shadow areas are so important and I want a ton of contrast in this shot but I'm not going to achieve that from just adding contrast itself. I really need to play with the curves and get the right amount of contrast in the right places and also retain the right amount of shadow detail. Now for this example, I'm actually going to add the curves before I add my lookup table, which is the normal thing that I would do, but I'm almost kind of planning ahead with this one. I'm aware that our lookup table will add even more contrast, so I'm just keeping that in mind. Meanwhile, I'm just playing with the mid-tones and I'm making sure nothing's clipping. I'm making sure I've got really nice shadow to highlight roll off on her forehead. Again, it's just some gentle massaging of the curves to bring out the most in our footage and really nail that contrast where we need it to be. So that's pretty much the look I had in my head. And then when we add our lookup table, 
bam! You can see that super contrasty look that I was going for. And at this stage, I might even go back to our curves and make sure we've got enough shadow detail. And here's the before and after, and I just know I wouldn't have been able to achieve that same crisp contrast that I've been able to get here just with the basic contrast controls from within Final Cut. This next example was shot in Cine 4, and it does look a little bit flat. I think we can really pump it up a little bit. Um, what I really wanted to achieve by using curves in this example is to get a similar effect to using something like the clarity fader within Lightroom. So it just adds that sort of texture, slight grittiness, a little bit of contrast. So as this shot was shot in Cine 4, it means I don't need to add a lookup table. It means I've got a reasonably contrasty image as it is. So. Subtlety is the key with this one, possibly even more so than with our previous examples, just because it already has a lot of contrast and it'd be easy to overdo it. As with before, I'm adding lots of control points and the only difference really being that with this example, I'm gonna be making very, very subtle adjustments. No kind of mad boosting of highlights or shadows or anything like that. Really what I'm looking for whilst I'm working is to boost texture. That's what I'm really looking for, texture in the ground, on the plants, I'm looking at the highlight areas a lot. As I said before, what I'm really looking for is a similar effect to if you were to add clarity to a photo within Lightroom. You know, it's that effect that just adds dimension and texture and really makes things just pop and look really crunchy and tasty and good. And so here's our before and after and as you can see the tweaks I've made to the curves have made a huge difference to all the textures in our shot and it looks absolutely super punchy now which is exactly what I was going for. Mmm tasty. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let's have a little curves five. And I've made a huge amount of videos like this, so I'll pop a couple of interesting ones for you on this side. And if you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Hit this blob, I'll pop it on this side. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.